This piece brings together performativity, gender, and post-postmodern dynamics. Blah, blah, blah. My research into the Canadian art world didn't start out with abstract ideas about art. Instead, I made a material and analytical inquiry. By that, I mean I examined actual practices and relations. I interviewed visual artists about their real work to do art and be artists. What I uncovered was surprising. I came to see workplace writing as vital to artists' success. Artists write to get out there, to get money, and to get into galleries. As Gatineau artist Beth McCubbin put it, she's almost like a gallery worker, constantly filling in forms. As I learned more about the work and workplace writing artists do, it became important not to rank how they feel about it, but to examine how those institutional experiences came to be. To understand how they were set up, I interviewed gallery curators about their work. Get this. Some curators mentioned that when making a decision about who to show, they look first and foremost at an artist's writing not at the work. Other curators mentioned that having an artist who can write about her work makes it easier for curators to do theirs. Hmm. As I dug deeper though, I realized it wasn't that curators were out to get artists, it, that, it was that curators across Ontario were responsible for aligning their work with organizational mandates and with the priorities of the funding bodies. Curators had to show work that was worth its weight in words. There's a tension though. Many artists really struggle with the demands to turn their art into writing. As Hamilton artist Virginia Marie put it, she'd rather perform a song. So what now? One way to tackle this could be to put artists in cubicles. In cubicles, they could write, they could perform, and they could produce institutionally sanctioned art. My research, however, challenges art that looks like and speaks to the organizational mandate. My research clears space for art that performs as art.